Our quest for knowledge of the ancient things is an unnerving journey into the unknown. We're not supposed to be looking for the things that are long forgotten, yet we have a growing obsession with this struggle, almost like the past is echoing in our minds when we are confronted with these things. We are told that conscious feelings like deja vu is a trick of the mind. Despite this, our intuition tells us it's real. In this moment, we experience an overwhelming sense of familiarity towards something that seemingly isn't familiar at all. And with this very profound feeling that most of us get, it tells us something that would imply that we have experienced before, like we have been in that moment before. This is the universe telling us something, a fleeting moment of surreal realization and something we don't want to let go of. Instead, it slips away, almost as if for one second of time, we were tapping into something that constantly exists round about us. Us humans aren't here on Earth for nothing. We have said it before that we may be the first of our kind, and we may be here on the Earth in an effort to preserve life from forces that will act against us. We do realize this is crazy though, but it is based on good merit and makes just as much sense as anything else we believe. This planet is allowing us to survive only just though, and we aren't flourishing here. We are not fulfilling our true potential as beings of the universe. Nowhere near it. And we sense something like deja vu. These are part of the senses that are being denied. Think about our presence on the earth. We get sick, we get allergies, we break, we crack, we burn, we lose our sight, we are stressed, we have strange diets, we tire very easily, we forget about things, and above all else, we are aging far too rapidly. When we see an old person, we think, long life, great. But we are wrong. We are convincing ourselves that 80 or 90 years is long, when in actual fact, the historical and religious texts are telling us that in the before time, we lived well into the hundreds and in cases of kings and queens, thousands of years. It does overwhelmingly suggest that either something happened here on Earth to change our environment, or that we came from somewhere else, and arrived on the earth. The Ark of Noah being the vessel that saved us as a species and the Great Flood being an event open to interpretation. With all the new discoveries taking place regarding the moon from the Apollo astronauts telling us there was something metallic under the thin surface to China telling us recently that there is mantle on the surface of the dark side, and now this latest discovery of something the size of Hawaii detected under the moon's largest crater, you do have to ask the question, well, what exactly is the moon? Wait till you hear this. A strange little phenomenon that is taking place right inside our own conscious thinking is this. Anything that is present and that has been present since our existence here shouldn't be questioned. But we are beginning to ask these questions even if the first four answers will only unveil more questions. Us humans have an overwhelming desire to live out our lives the best that we can. We don't really have a choice in the matter as we are here for the foreseeable future, but at the same time, we should be preparing the future generations for the eventual disclosure of who we are. This disclosure might not come from within our current system, but from the return of whatever put us here. It is a strange thought, we know, but isn't it even more strange to think we were always here on the Earth without any interference from other beings? Of course, we know there are other beings, the gods, so it would seem inevitable that they would return one day and probably within their life spans. The moon is completely anomalous, bigger than Pluto, which itself has many moons. This constant celestial body serves as a reminder that there is more. We feel we can touch it on a clear night and we have an overwhelming desire to go to this place. It is foreseen that the moon will be a stepping stone in our exploration of the solar system. Yet we are learning all the time that what the ancients tell us about this anomalous feature in our night sky is that it has a more elaborate purpose. In fact, it is there simply because of our presence here. The latest discovery by researchers is astonishing. The lead author is quoted as saying the following. Imagine taking a pile of metal five times larger than the big island of Hawaii and burying it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass was detected. 
When we combined that with lunar topography data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, we discovered the unexpectedly large amount of mass hundreds of miles underneath the South Pole Atkin Basin. One of the explanations of this extra mass is that the metal from the asteroid that formed this crater is still embedded in the Moon's mantle. The dense mass, whatever it is, wherever it came from, is weighing the basin floor downward by more than half a mile. Computer simulations of large asteroid impacts suggest that, under the right condition, an iron nickel core of an asteroid may be adkin into the upper mantle, the layer between the moon's crust and core, during an impact. We did the math and showed that a sufficiently dispersed core of the asteroid that made the impact could remain suspended in the moon's mantle until the present day, rather than sinking to the moon's core. Could an artificial structure really exist inside the moon's structure? In 1972, Soviet astronomers had been studying the satellite and theorized that it was likely a hollow moon put in place by a highly advanced extraterrestrial race. Their theory was based on these observable anomalies, claiming the moon was an artificial shell that had been inhabited internally for years. While it might seem far-fetched that we are being surveilled by an extraterrestrial race on the moon, or that a hollow moon may have been intentionally placed in Earth's orbit as a secret moon base, there are a plethora of inexplicable facts about its relationship with Earth. To this day, there are several theories that attempt to explain how the moon ended up orbiting our planet, though none have been absolutely accepted, leading many to believe that the moon is a spaceship. Without the moon orbiting precisely where it is, it's possible that life on Earth wouldn't exist, or at least wouldn't have evolved to the point that it has. In fact, it is estimated that less than 10% of all terrestrial planets in the universe have an Earth to moon ratio like ours, which provides the stability that is necessary to maintain a climate that can harbor life. The size of the moon is such that it affects our axial tilt, or the way that the Earth wobbles on its axis, changing by a single degree over the course of thousands of years. This relegation to one degree of movement is necessary for climate stability. Without the moon's balance, the Earth could tilt as much as 85 degrees every million years or so, causing drastic changes. This would adjust the orientation of the Earth to the Sun so significantly that the Sun would shift to be situated directly over the poles rather than the equator where it currently is. Life could not survive during such radical shifts. That's all from us for the moment, guys. We do hope you have enjoyed this video, and we will, of course, be back just shortly with more. So make sure you have your alerts turned on. Just before we go, we'll be linking the new book by K.M. Lewis, a fantastical hypothetical exploration of all things covered on this channel, offering an alternative outlook on past and future events, and bringing all the artifacts together in a very meaningful way. We would encourage you guys to follow the link below. The book is titled The 13th Guardian, and we know you won't be disappointed, especially if you have been following our channel for any length of time. Check that out, guys. Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.